guys, so the reason I'm in this slightly strange setup is because I'm currently in my mum's house and that means I'm also surrounded by all of the many books that I have stored here, which includes my childhood books, my teen books, books I just read over the years whilst I did and didn't live here but before I moved to London and actually a few books I still haven't read that are on my TBR. <laughs> So I thought this would be the perfect environment to finally film the how well do I know my shelves or how well do I know my books challenge which was started by Jesse the reader. Now my internet is currently down so I'm going to have to look at the questions on my phone as well as hopefully number combinations that you guys have sent me on Twitter. It looks like I have some alerts so it looks like you guys have come up trumps and have provided me with what I need because there are tons and tons of questions but essentially if you haven't seen one of these videos before there is a long list of questions and for each question you need a shelf number as well as a number for a book on the shelf and then you have to answer a question related to that book and it's kind of testing how well you actually know the books on your shelves. This seemed like a more sensible place to do that video than I'm on my shelves in London because a lot of more of those I haven't read than the ones that are here. So hopefully that means I do know these books reasonably well. We will find out, won't we? But without further ado, let's just jump straight in. And the first question for this challenge is, without looking at the description, tell us what the book is about. And the first number combination I have is 22 and 8. Okay, thankfully I have read this book and it is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This I know the plot of. I love this book. It is a modern classic from the mid 20th century and it follows these two sisters, who, sisters whose names I can't actually remember. Sorry, I keep looking like I'm looking at the back but there's no blurb on this back so I'm not cheating. It's just a gorgeous edition. It's about these two sisters and in fact their uncle who live in this big house on the top of a hill which is where the title We Have Always Lived in a Castle comes from and they are outcasts from the rest of their community because the rest of their family died a little while back and everyone thinks it was the older sister who killed them all but it just hasn't been proved so because of that they've kind of been outcast and as you can probably tell from the cover on this one there is a lot about mob mentality in this story lots of secrets beautifully written just love this book all round I then have 13 and 27 and for that the question is without looking up what is the genre of this book I'm already regretting this because the rest of my shelves are over there, so just give me a minute and I'll be back. And I'm back. Uh, so this is actually quite a fun one to show you. This is uh, one of my many volumes of Irwilly, which is a Scots cartoon that has been going for nigh on centuries, it feels like. I don't know, a long, long time since well before I was born and still goes into today. And whenever I was a kid, I always got the Irwilly or Bruins, which is um, also another Scots comic book for Christmas, like the bind up of, of the stories from that year. So this is what it looks like inside, black and white. And if I were to define the genre of this, I'd say comedy. They are comic strips, so there we go. Oh, we then have, without looking at the book, tell us what is on the cover. And for this, our numbers are 35 and 12. So 12 is over there, so let me find 35. Okay, I'm not looking at it, I'm not looking at it. Um, it is this book, I can look at the spine, which says, Alice Walker, you can't keep a good woman down. Um, it's got a pink background. I feel like the cover is pink or purple as well. It might be a flower. I think the cover is a flower. Yes, the cover is a flower. What flower? I don't know because that's not really the thing that I am good at. But yeah, it is a flower. So got that. This is a short story collection, which I love. Brief interlude. <laughs> I decided to completely change my setup. I realised I'm going to be moving around for this video a lot and it would be much easier to be standing than sitting, so let's carry on, shall we? The next challenge is without looking to tell us the main character's name. And for this, the numbers are three and three. So this very much feels like cheating, but the answer is Jane Eyre, because the title of this book is Jane Eyre. And as we know, that is also the main character of this book. Other important characters, St. John, uh, Mr. Rochester, the woman in the attic uh, <laughs> would be some of the other important ones, but yeah, Jane Eyre wins, so that was easy. I actually just headed myself off there, because next is to name some side characters, and for that we have the numbers uh, 26 and 7. Again, this seems too easy, but this is one of my vintage editions of Sherlock Holmes, and 
The main side character in this is of course Dr. Watson, there is also Inspector Lestrade, the mysteries inside this one are the man with the twisted lip, the dancing men and his last bow, and honestly I could not tell you the names of any of the characters in those mysteries. I only really care about Holmes and Watson, so no idea what those characters are also called, but yeah, Dr. Watson. I then have to guess the number of pages in a book without checking, and I can be 25 above or 25 below, and for that the numbers are 32 and 2. For this we have Aristotle's The Nicomachean Ethics, which is a book of ancient Greek philosophy, kind of. Uh, so, I don't know how many pages in this. Uh, I'm going to say there's either in the early 300s or the late 200s. Let's go for 293. Dun dun dun. Oh, ha, not 293, but 283. Like, not even kidding. So I still win because it's 25 or tw it's 25 either way. Woo! And that's why I have a classics degree. I then have to tell you what rating I gave this book, which is 2 and 7. Um, I think because of the way I asked for the numbers, that means 7 is the shelf and 2 is the number. So for that, easy peasy, Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Pretty sure I gave this 4 stars. I really enjoyed it. It was my first? No, it was my second ever Jane Austen and I have given, I'm pretty sure I gave it 4 stars. Yeah, I don't think I gave it 5. I'm pretty sure I gave it 4. For 32 and 15, we have Where Is This Book Set? For this, we have... Greek mythology, a traveller's guide from Mount Olympus to Troy. Weird coincidence. Obviously this is set in ancient Greece and the geography area is also Greece because it's a traveller's guide to ancient Greece. Okay. The next one I really need to get an appropriate set of numbers for because it's what are the parents' names. <laughs> and for that I have 1 and 16. I was going to say I don't think there's going to be parents wherever this book is because 1 is not a children's book shelf, and that's where usually parents are. Oh, I haven't even read this. Um, it's Milkman by Anna Burns, so if there's parents in this, I don't know what they're called. We then have one I have to get a hardback for because it's what colour is the hardback under the dust jacket. So for this we have 5 and 12, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh, oh, maybe. That didn't take me to a hardback, so I'm going to use a different set of numbers and come back to 5 and 12, 39 and 3, please. Thank you, Sana. <laughs> Okay, so we do have a hardback, thankfully, and that is Emma Donoghue's Frog Music, and I'm pretty sure the back- oh, I kind of just cheated myself. I'm pretty sure the hardback is white, and I just looked at my cover and realised there are cutouts, so I can already see that it's white. I did kind of remember that, so yeah, white. Now let's return to 5 and 12. For that, the question is, without looking, is there anything on the hardback, like an imprint of an image or sort? Okay. We've already established that number combination doesn't give me a hardback, so we'll go for 9 and 5. Okay, um, <laughs> this is such a cheat again. I'm only looking at the spine, but I know there's a picture on this. It's Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and the, first of all, the dust jackets and the hardbacks on these original editions from when I was a kid are the same, so the image from the dust jacket is also printed on the hardback, but this one is also missing, it's dust jacket, so it is only a hardback these days. But I would have known that even if the dust jacket had been on it. The next question is without looking, of course. <laughs> Do the chapters have titles or not? And for that, the numbers are 37 and 3. Oh dear, I haven't read this book, so that's immediately a little bit difficult. Comte Tobin's House of Names, which is a retelling of Greek myth of Clytemnestra. I'm going to say no. But again, I haven't read it, so I don't know. Dun dun dun, dun dun dun. Oh, not finding. Oh, is this the kind of book that doesn't even have chapters? I don't think this book has chapters. Which kind of means that they don't have titles. If they don't <laughs> have chapters. I was about to count it as a win and then I realised the book is however separated into sections which are named after the characters, so it kind of does have names. We then have, without looking at the cover, does it have an award sticker on it? And for that we have 22 and 14. Right, I'm not looking at the cover. There's the back. Um, but I know what it is from the spine, and it's an old classic edition of some ancient plays, which makes me 100% certain there will not be an award sticker on the front. No. Euripides Alcestes does not have an award sticker on the front, although Euripides won some awards, so really, we should be bedazzling these. We then have, without looking, does this book have any author blurbs on the front cover? And for that, the numbers are 13 and 7. I can tell you it's one of my Moomin books down here, and I honestly haven't got a clue. So I'm not looking at the cover, I'm not, I'm not looking at the cover. 
I'm gonna say no. I feel like the Moomins wouldn't have author blurbs on the front, but I could be wrong. No, it doesn't. I also knew these were quite pretty editions, which often means I think they wouldn't put that kind of thing on the front cover. It's Moom and Papa, let's see. 38 and 7 then take us to Does This Book have a blurb on the back. Okay, so that shelf didn't have that many books on it, so I just carried on to the next shelf with my counting, and for that it's one of my Robin Hood books, because I could see the spine, and yes, this does have a blurb on the back, because it's a paperback. They generally speaking do. It's the first in the Rainworld Chronicles called The Dragon Keeper. Amazing book. Without looking, does this book have an author photo? Interesting. I don't know if I would know that or not. For that we have 7 and 16, but that's shelf 16 and book 7. Okay, so for that we have The Geek Feminist Revolution by Cameron Hurley, which is a essay collection. I'm going to say no because I feel like paperbacks don't generally have author pictures, but I could be wrong. I think like this is more of a hardback thing. Um, not in the back. Not in the front either. So no, this one does not have an author picture. Do you like all my tabs though? We then have does this author use a pen name and for that we have 28 and 14. Which brings me to uh, Women in Greek Myth by Mary R. Lefkowitz. This is a uh, non-fiction book. I am like 100% certain this is not a pen name because it's non-fiction and I've read other things by this author. Wouldn't recommend though, this is like not good. I honestly just keep it around to disagree with. Without peeking, what point of view is this book written in? First or third person? And for that we have 4 and 27. Okay, for this we have one of my childhood favourites and that is The Castle of Mirrors by Jenny Nemo. This is in the Charlie Bone series. Oh, I recently started re-listening to the Charlie Bone books from my library on audiobook. So I should know, I'm pretty sure it's written in third person, like I'm pretty sure the narrator says Charlie a lot, therefore he's not just referring to himself in the third person, so narrated in the third person. Yeah, I've got to get my stuff said Charlie rather than I said. There we go! Without looking, are there pictures or graphics in this book? For that we have seven and seven. People really like Shelf 7, just putting it out there. And for this one we have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I don't think so, I haven't read this or this edition. I haven't read this or this edition, I haven't read this full stop, so of course I've not read this edition. So I have no idea if there's um, pictures or not. But to my uh, naked eye, nah. There's not. We then have, without looking, does this book have an epilogue? And for that we have 3 and 14. And that is Hagseed by Margaret Atwood. I'm thinking yes, just based on events in this book, that there is a epilogue. So let's find out. I don't usually pay that much attention to whether things are a chapter or whether they are an epilogue. Epilogue, yes. There's an epilogue and it's called Set Me Free. To follow on, the next question is, is there a prologue? For which we have 12 and 34. One I haven't read, and that is The Wine Dark Sea by Robert Aikman. These are horror short stories, so honestly, short stories, I'm gonna say no to prologue, just based on the genre. Yeah, no prologue. There's an introduction, but no prologue. I feel like I've been here for about a million years, but <laughs> there aren't that many questions left. We've got Without Looking, Is This Book Signed? And for that, the numbers are 23 and 16. Again, pretty easy. Pretty sure this is not signed. This is a second-hand copy that I got of the Everyman's Smaller Classical Dictionary. I feel like it'd be weird if it's signed. I mean, someone's written two pound in it in the charity shop or second-hand shop. No. This there's no signature in my dictionary. Without looking, do the page numbers have a design? And for this we have 8 and 15. And that is Death in the Clouds by Agatha Christie. This is one of the Poirot novels. I'm not actually sure whether this edition has images on the chapter headings or not. No, it doesn't. I should have guessed. Sorry, I was meant to say, yes, I think it does or doesn't. It doesn't, but I didn't know that. I also just realised that I think I did that question wrong because I just looked at the chapter headings and it was, what, do the page numbers have a design? There is also a question which is, do the chapter headers have a design? So that we'll say that was that question. Now we'll do, do the page numbers have a design? And for that, the numbers are 15 and 24. That gives us Sally Heathcote, Suffragette uh, by Mary M. Talbot, Brian Talbot, and illustrated by Kate Charlesworth. So page numbers have a design. This is a graphic novel. So either, yes, they've been heavily illustrated, or no, they're just trying to blend in with the rest of the illustrations. I'm gonna go for no, they're just trying to blend in. 
yeah. So they are just tiny little regular page numbers at the bottom of each page, rather than distracting from the rest of the incredible graphics in this book. Without looking, are the acknowledgements in the front or the back of the book? Interesting question. For that, we have three and five. Again, we're back on the Harry Potter bandwagon. This is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. The acknowledgements, I think the acknowledgements are at the front of Harry Potter, but I could be wrong. Let's find out. Uh, well, no, not in this edition. Well, there is a dedication at the front and I think that's what I was actually thinking of for Sean P. Heff, Harris, getaway driver and fibble weather friend. Actual acknowledgements. Oh, there are no acknowledgements, but in this edition, quite adorably, I've never noticed this before, it has fan letters. It's very cute. Um, there are no acknowledgements at the back, but there's a dedication at the front. So I'm kind of right and kind of wrong. Penultimate question, without looking, what year was this book published? Okay, this is getting difficult. Um, for that, we have one and one. Okay, one and one gives us oranges are not the only fruit by Jeanette Winderson. I'm sorry, bookshop. Um, when was this published? Oh, this edition or this book? Oh. I'm going to say the book came out in the 80s. Don't know what year. 82, let's just guess. And that this edition is from like 2015. <laughs> like, so arbitrary. Oh my god. Sorry, this edition came out in 2014, so I was really close. And it was originally published in 1985. Okay, I know I didn't get that spot on, but for guesses, that was kind of close. Then, last but certainly not least, is without looking, what year did you read this book? And for that, I have numbers 12 and 12, which finishes us off with Brand New Engines by Kate Tempest, which is a collection of poetry. Now, I bet I could figure this out if I thought about it. I read my first collection of Kate Tempest poetry in 2015, because it was sort of January 2015. I remember sort of starting the year off with it. And I imagine I would have read this the same year or the following year. So did I read this in 2015 or 2016? Let's say I went on a real binge and read it in 2015, but I am going to have to check this one on Goodreads to find out if I'm right or not, so just bear with me. You finished this book on the 11th of August 2015. I was correct. I think, generally speaking, I did alright. I think I would have found it harder if I was in my flat, because like I said, there's a lot more unread books that are on my TBR there that I've been sent by publishers, etc, etc. So it was fun doing it with this mixture of books that are new and old, non-fiction fiction, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Do, of course, check out Jesse's original video. He makes some really incredible, fun, unique challenges that you can film if you're interested. Um, but also let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this video. And until next time, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye, guys.